Jeff Bacalar, it's horizon time. Certainly is, my friend. It is time to drive the roads of Mexico. Wait. This, uh, which game are you playing? I, I, I'm, I'm driving around. I'm wrecking my machine into other machines. I'm oh, I'm doing a lot of... I'm getting parts off the machines and putting them on to other... It's a whole upgrade thing. Forza Horizon 5, right? That's what we're... Certainly, certainly driving around uh, the, the Mexico. Yes, I'm driving no? around the Mexico, the, the most forbidden of Wests. <laughs> um, Horizon Forbidden West is coming out pretty soon here on the PlayStation 5. Um, we can show precisely 30 minutes of footage of it. So we figured we would talk about it. I'm, um, I, you know, I haven't finished the game or anything like that. In fact, I would say I'm, I'm still... It seems like I am out of the prologue and into what is kind of the first big story beat um, before you get into what looks like the rest of the map, the actual Forbidden West. Uh, you've been playing it as well. Um, yeah, there's a lot of that West that's forbidden and <laughs> yeah. forbidden just for you out for, on the map, just, just kind of fogged out. Um, and yeah, you know, I think, well, we could just jump right into it, right? I mean, um, you know, I guess it might help to refresh our uh, listeners' uh, memory with our sort of familiarity with, like, the first game, right? And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I finished that first game. I really enjoyed the uh, the dangling of the carrot, as it were. It's sort of like, what is this world? Why is this? Why is this world? Yeah. What about... What are the machines? Who? Where are the machines from? What? Why is this all who, happening? Why is this all happening? It's like is a this Planet Earth? of the Apes situation where these, these are torn up modern buildings. What's going on? That looks like a skyscraper. Modern. That oh, is, this, is this is this the future? Is this like an alternate? Re What's going on? And the first horizon, um, we have some footage that I guess we could just we could just. Uh, do you want to start popping it off right now? Or yeah, I mean, I don't think we necessarily yeah. need to talk about the footage. This is uh, this no. is the game running on a PlayStation Five uh, set to quality mode. I captured this in 4K, but of course, it's getting compressed and compressed over and over again and all that other yeah. stuff so um um but yeah you know for me like finding that massively backloaded um narrative and uh, that exposition dump that happens at the tail end of that first game yeah uh for me was it was a little bittersweet uh it was it was a little it was it was a lot to sort of digest right at the end there the way they 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 tied it all up and you know i found myself saying okay well now that I know what this story is, uh, you know, w what else is there really to do? And right. in Forbidden West, that came rushing back to me in a way where, you know, we're, we're looking at an absolutely gorgeously detailed, thorough, uh, you know, amazingly uh, deep game. But mm -hmm. the driving narrative uh, you sort of force behind it through in my original playthrough. I'm not so much, I'm so much sure that that, uh, dangling of that narrative carrot is, is, is landing in the way that it did the first time for me. Yeah, I think so too. It's I, so I, I liked the, the big reveal of like, Hey, modern technology of, of, you know, our, what we think of as yours and mine's modern era. Mm -hmm. uh, destroyed the world, which I think is very believable. Um, sure. And and at the time that that first game came out, I feel like that hadn't necessarily been done to death, and and so I really appreciated that. But it also it was a game I really enjoyed and felt like, man, I got everything I want to get out of this world and story because because like you, it was like once they reveal, hey, it was you know basically Facebook destroyed the world, you know whatever, <laughs> uh, big big tech destroyed the world. Um, and, and then tried to desperately find a way to rebuild it later. And that's why you exist and all this other stuff. Like, I think once you find that out, that was it. Like the rest of it, I don't care about the, the Nora tribe, the sun King, all this. I do not care. So, so when they kind of tease a sequel and they tease, Hey, there could be more of this at the end of that game. I was kind of bummed out because it felt like a perfect beginning, middle and end of that story. They close it off and you're like, great, I this is this is all I want to know. Mm -hmm. And so there was a part of me that was a little bummed when they announced a sequel. But that said, I think this is a really good video game. But this whole first chunk of it, um, 
it's just all diplomacy. Like there's there's uh, the the early on setting is like, hey, there's a blight spreading around the world, and you need to find part of the terraforming, uh, a backup of the terraforming program that was supposed to rebuild the world after big tech destroyed it, um, so that you can you can activate that and put that into into motion. And that's like the prologue. It's very early game stuff. They mention that stuff, and then you're just kind of like, all right, well. Uh, you need to track down Silence, who turned out to be the bad guy from the first game, and he's gone west. And in order to get west, you then have to engage in a buttload of diplomacy and all this other, you know, it's, it just becomes, it gets like bogged down like a Star Wars prequel here mm. uh, in the early going, because it's just very much like a bunch of pompous bureaucrats, and you're just like, whatever, I'm the knife that's going to cut through all this stuff and make sure that this this embassy happens and all this other stuff, but all of your missions are based around that and not around, you know, to me, the, the interesting part of the world and the story was the kind of, you know, what happened and why. And now that we know most of that, um, or, or, or not to say that this game isn't going to have reveals of its own. I'm sure it does, but, uh, I am finding the, I am not being driven through this in such a way uh, as I was in the first game as they started to kind of unload here's the the interesting stuff so you know kind of a slow start narratively and, and it's focused on the stuff in Horizon that I'm like largely indifferent about um, yeah which, you know, which is the politics of that world and the Sundom and uh, and all those other different factions and stuff yeah uh a, in my opinion, a very, very kind of almost surprisingly slow start to this game uh, in a way that, you know, I think on, <laughs> we had, I don't know if it was Bombcast or the dump truck where someone was like, hey, you ever skip cutscenes? And I feel like my answer to that question was like emphatically like, no, oh my God, no. And I have fast forward conversations in this game already. Yeah, you can, um, you can one button your way past each line of dialogue. So you still get to read it and still kind of see the cutscenes. But yes, the, it is very long winded in a way that I have also just been like, okay, all right, let's. Yeah, I mean, let's go. And, and you're right. Like you, you, you early on, you come to find that you are essentially taking on this sort of chosen one role and you know, you do have to deal with everyone else's bullshit while you're like, no, 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 I, I actually am the one who can save the entire Earth because, you know, I'm the DNA clone of its creator and, like, I, I need to be there. So, like, let me through. <laughs> let me through yeah. to the Forbidden West. And, um, like you said, that being the, the narrative driving force is is just in itself a bit less interesting than what you're doing the first time around now i will say that like the combat stuff and all of the fun things that you started to really dig um the first playthrough like for me that was the most fun of like setting traps and taking down these massive uh machine animal things like that stays yeah. fun and that's still here and that gets a lot better especially after you get out of this sort of like first uh, like you said, story beat area that we're looking at right now. But um, is that enough to carry it all the way through with the expected amount of plot twist turns and other stuff that fills uh, all the gaps? I, I don't know. I, I kind of can't say one way or the other. If you really love the first one in a way that existed outside of just the storytelling, where the storytelling was maybe a second or third draw for you, like, you, yes, you'll, you'll probably dig this and see it all the way through. But I also think something we have to talk about is the fact that this is still very much the almost exact same game. Yeah. And does that hold up all these years later, especially after we just got finished talking about the Far Cry fatigue and all of these games that just look a little different through the lens of 2022 uh, uh, yeah. as opposed to what they looked like when they first came out? I think that the, the thing I'll say is is all of the side content, and I've done, like, on, on my way to this point here, I have done pretty much every single, like, exclamation point quest that I could find, which is a bunch of side stuff, a bunch of helping people out, and, and all of that. And for whatever reason, it wouldn't let me run here. I kept clicking in the left stick, and it, it doesn't, it wouldn't run. I don't know why. Mm. You're supposed to be able to it's run. A stubborn machine. Stubborn machine. Yeah. Um, and and that was a weird. I don't know if that's a bug or if I just something <laughs> just wrong happened. Just your way. Yeah. There has been like, a, a, a pretty. Well, there was there was a big update that we got recently. Um, just to. So I recorded for, this on the know, other side of that update for the record. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of their day one patch. Um. So, 
where was I? So, you know, unlike a lot of open world games, the the side stuff, at least the the kind of side quests and stuff that I've seen up to this point have all been uh, all had little stories of their own, little characters of their own, dialogue of their own. It hasn't been a ton of just cookie cutter stamped out open world junk everywhere. And so that's mm-hmm. that's made it feel a little bit uh, a little bit more engaging than I think a lot of other open world games. And I think that still plays. Also, for a lot of these side quests, you get skill points for completing them. And the skill tree is huge, just seven different versions of this tree, been like for, for ranged attacks, for melee, for stealth, for machine override stuff, for healing. You know, there's just a, like seven different trees to dump points into. And so completing all of those side quests made me feel like, okay, I'm now I'm... Now I'm getting somewhere. I have some good melee combat some options and, you know, some some more slow motion time with my bow and, and other stuff like that that feels like it's just, you know, fleshing out the combat in, in more interesting ways. Um, yeah. And so I think that's what sets it apart from like a Far Cry 6 where that stuff just feels like it's just dumped all over the map and you're like, all right, there's 20 of these. That said... When you're looking at, you know, machines that you haven't uh, been able to override yet, she still says like, oh, if I can find the cauldron for this, then I can override this animal. So it's like all the same stuff from that first game feels like it's just here again, you know, and it's uh, it's a nice looking game. It was a nice looking game before. It loads a lot faster on the PlayStation 5 uh, yeah, than kind the of first game did on PS4. Yeah. Um, a lot of great accessibility options here um, as well, and and so I've I've taken advantage of a few of those, like just hey, show me where I can climb when I pop the focus, and and it's drawing all these you know lines and little skeleton polygonal things on here to sh- show me where I can go, uh, which mm-hmm. I found to be useful. Um, a lot of other stuff like oh, you can. Um, make it so it'll automatically heal you if you get below a certain amount. It'll instead of you having to hit up on the D-pad, which I, I did, did not turn that on. It, it's got a lot of little adjustments and stuff like that for accessibility that also just you know can be used to tailor the game to your liking. Not necessarily in a yeah. harder, or easier sense, but I, I appreciate that Sony's been been really doing a lot of that lately. Yeah, and and the whole idea of kind of. Uh, minimizing the intrusiveness of the HUD too, like overall, I think was a, a right. really smart sort of, uh, you know, use of the screen and, and giving you the agency to kind of uh, do what you want there. I think that's super, super bright. Um, and it does add a bit of, can't quite like put it into words, but it, there's something about how you're um, not obsessing over a lot uh, you know, juggling, you know, all these uh, different things that you would normally do when you've got the full HUD up and you're just sort of like, okay, am I, what, am I tracking this and tracking that? Like, taking that away and giving you the option at the beginning of the game to say, like, hey, do you want a little less in-your-face hand-holding? I think is a smart option to, to have. Yeah, and, and you could customize it pretty, you know, so you can swipe up on the, on the, the touchpad at any point to do, to show the full HUD. Um, the thing I did change is um the the icon in world showing you where to go i turned that from like explorer to guided or whatever it is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um because it just shows you like in, instead of just showing you the end point it'll say here's the walkway you can take to get there um which i i found to be a, a pretty decent compromise um between those two things so you know it's just it's it's a nice level of customizability um that i that i i really did appreciate um or ha- have appreciated so far i guess i should say um, but yeah, it's, um, you know, you have coils and you have weaves and you have like the, the upgrade type stuff from the first game, um, is here the percentage bonuses that you can equip to your, your weapons and your, your suits and stuff like that. Like a, a lot of that same stuff is, is definitely, uh, still a part of the game. Um, I still think it's funny that like basically her magic powers amount to having a Google Glass, <laughs> um, but but like one that isn't total garbage. <laughs> like, hey, they finally yeah, made a good one of these, and, and it brought about the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. um, it's only a thousand years too late. Yeah, um, and you know, 
you can still scan the environment and do all that same stuff with your focus and and all of that like yeah it's it's i'm i'm struggling a little bit to tell you like what is actually brand new here other than the visual upgrades and and i think that pull caster i don't know that you were necessarily pulling walls apart in the first game but it, it's it's honestly it's it's been a while and it doesn't necessarily it, yeah, feel I like mean, a dramatic upgrade yet no, i mean obviously I mean, yet you know this is not the not not a review this is not the end game discussion so it is, it is great having this at your disposal and sort of like what you kind of discover you also can do with it, I think is um, is really fun. But, uh, and, and I think like, especially early on, they, they do kind of force you to like overuse it in a way that you sort of learn the ropes with it. Um, yeah. But I, uh, yeah, I, I think for me, you know, in the, and I guess I've, I've played maybe eight hours, 10 hours of this so far. Um, you know, I think I'm having a hard time making the sort of emotional investment of like being involved with the other people in this world. Yeah, I, I, it's... And, and look, and, and that's just me, right? Like I'm just not finding a, a, a sort of connection with that element of it. Like I yeah, said well, earlier it's, it's... on, like, Totally, yeah. I, I'm I'm with you, man. Because you run into a number of characters from the first game. You know, Varl is there mm -hmm. through the um, the prologue, and and you you just come across, especially when you first get back to like Meridian or whatever. Like there there's yeah, you know, a number of characters from the first game, most of whom I had completely Where forgotten. Um, but one of those devices. their attitude towards you is very much like, oh, you. You left. I guess you're the savior. I guess you gotta go. Oh, I guess I can't come with you because I'm not the savior. Like everyone right. is like cold to you in a way that I think is just for for considering how recently you just saved all their asses seems shitty. <laughs> um, like they just have a bad attitude, and you you run into we'll we'll run into a guy uh, near later on in the footage here that gives that exact uh, basically uh, that exact delivery um, and. And but like to a person, it's been that it's been like, well, if you've got to go, I guess you've got to go. Uh, but I very much want you to stay because I love you or or because I, I like you or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and you occasionally get some dialogue options and stuff like that. But it doesn't I, I don't know. Um, that stuff hasn't hasn't come up super often and hasn't felt like in, in, extremely consequential either. So. Mm. Um, yeah, I yeah. mean, and I think some of that has forced me to just not really care about some of the areas I've discovered and, and like be a part of that kind of community, right? Where it's like, oh, I can play games, I can eat food, I can, you know, for, and look, y there, w there will be people out there who, who see that and they're like, oh, I can't wait to take in that culture and be part of the, and that's great. And if you can find uh, enjoyment there and, and it works for you, th that's awesome. I. I've found it harder than most games for myself to get involved in that in a meaningful way with this with this game. Yeah. Um, I you know for me it's like there's something about the setup that has forced me to just want to get to the action and get to the sort of you know the melee stuff which is I think is pretty strong here too. Um, yeah, like that's you know, what it's the, really um, melee combos heavy. and stuff to like block breakers mm -hmm. and and like just some some of the options you have just straight up with your staff. I, I think is fun. You know, you can unlock an attack that'll basically it'll be an attack and then you'll jump and leap off of the enemy, letting you then draw your bow in the air and and put some arrows into them too, which is which is fun. But also it's a really solid stealth game. So I've just been cutting a lot of throats and stabbing a lot of machines <laughs> instead yeah. of. Uh, you know, even engaging in in full on open melee combat if I can help it. But yeah, it's uh, it, it, and I think that's this is all, all pretty on brand for how I felt about the first game, where I was like, this is really good. I you know I, I don't think there's a lot that there's there's nothing bad about this game for sure. I, I think it's all really solid. It, it's just like yeah, but making that additional investment and feeling like the world is something I care about. Like I, I feel like the stuff I cared about was explained in the first game. And so far, the story has not presented anything on that level um, for, for me to care about. So if, if the game does kind of stick with like the, hey, the the tribe from in the Forbidden West doesn't like the people that you have been hanging out with through the first game up until now. And, you know, if, if, it, if it just, if, if that's the crux of the story is just the sort of, 
again the, the diplomatic machinations of of these so tribes and stuff like that like that doesn't really interest me at all um and as you can imagine the yeah cans, the fans yeah it, you know and and i think there's also so a thing that i that really bummed me out about the first game um was the sort of like i mean we talked earlier about some of the side quests and how you know that really pushes forward the the ability to upgrade yourself and and do all that stuff there's still so much kind of looting in this game that doesn't really feel important um and i just you know there is something about like the first time i opened like a very you know a, a sort of uh you know valuable loot crate or whatever you want to go you know and all these things like we're seeing now like flooded into my inventory and i'm just like oh oh god like okay now oh, now i gotta like keep and look i don't know what it is i don't know if i've just like aged in a way with my with my sort of like tastes with with these types of games having played dozens and dozens of them over the last 10 years or so where yeah. this is just a thing that I, you know i can't tell if this is a thing that i'm just tired of and i just don't want to do this anymore i just don't want to like keep track of all these little shards and muscle you know rope that i've picked up and all this sort of stuff Again, it, it it all filters into the same kind of funnel of like, do you have enough shit to build a new add-on to your bow? Do you have yeah. enough shit to like put on to your trapper? Um, I you know I don't know, you know obviously the criticism in there is just like make that more fun or or you know have it not be a thing uh, that you have to sort of babysit. Um, to me, that mechanic is definitely on the other side of of the of, of like how long i think it should exist sure um it's it's becoming something that i'm just turned off by when i see it no i i get it like i that stuff i think the good news is you don't I, I, well I, I haven't had to care about any of that because i've had most right. of what I, i've needed except for like oh there's you know one specific rare item that you need to kill an enemy a certain way to get the part to pop off um, totally and, which, and which also you they, absorb yeah all that anyway yeah, you know like yeah but like you know they, they have like the concept of valuables which will be like here's a set of keys from the old world or a watch or you know and and going in and selling all that just to get the currency and you know like like just give me the currency like that you don't there's no the world building gained by look i found a watch is like seconds long and then it's just you mm -hmm. know every box you open you hit take all i don't even care what's inside it i'll worry about it later um when i when i get to a point where i'm like okay now i need to find these upgrades but that hasn't happened yet i've i've almost always had enough to uh upgrade my outfit and weapons and stuff like that um it, it's never it's never been a problem one of the new things on the skill tree there is uh, these I, valor abilities you you have a meter that builds up um and then you can basically you hit L1 and then tap R1 to activate it. Each of the trees has its own. You can only equip one at a time from the look. Actually, you might be able to equip a second one later on now that I'm mm -hmm. looking at the, the UI. But um, this will be stuff like, uh, you know, you, you basically like pop a meter and then you do more damage with melee for a set period of time or with ranged if you equip that one or it, it's a stealth suit that turns you invisible for a brief period of time or, you know, like, like there's, you know, different, the different trees have different... Uh, abilities that you can unlock uh they unlock relatively early on in the tree so you can i think i have like three or four of them unlocked already um and uh they have not been super useful um playing on normal you know but i you know i don't know i feel like i got pretty okay at the first game and i feel like i found a play style that fit how i wanted to play it which was usually no traps i found the traps mm. and tripwires to be a gigantic pain in the ass in the first game and just never used them um and and so I instead it was just like well I'm just gonna use my bow and just with all the tear damage tear all the good parts off of these enemies so that I'm constantly getting whatever upgrade materials I need and and all of this other stuff and uh, and and that playstyle has worked out well for me through the first game and it's worked out pretty well here uh, too and and yeah it's uh it's 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 a very familiar feeling game you know you, you kind of sink right back into it and i think you know obviously if we go back and look at the first game running on a playstation 4 compared to this this game's going to look better 
but with the passage of time and how that game looks in my head, this looks right in line with that. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. that was a great looking PS4 game. This is a really good looking PS5 game. Uh, Aloy looks like Aloy. You expect her to look and, and the world looks how you expect it to look, all that sort of stuff. And, and uh, so like the most impressive like tech thing is probably the load times. Like when you fast travel, die or anything like that like it's boom boom you're back in and that's great that's totally. awesome which um, is which is honestly the i'm starting to get the feeling that like that might be what we remember from this generation which is fine right uh, not to undersell it incredibly fast load times and fast travel like that's such a huge step ahead and really just uh changes the way i think about playing games because mm -hmm. now it's there's there's some sort of like weight that's been lifted right like i feel like the thing was like oh god i'm gonna what am i gonna restart this game right now and wait like four and a half minutes like no th that's not what we're doing now th we're at yeah. a different point in in this evolution but yes fidelity wise like my, either i have a very generous memory of what the first horizon looked like or it's a great looking game on that console totally, like, it looked great totally. it, it's not you know yeah, it, it, definitely not taking know. anything away from it. It's just, you know, the, the sort of like mental evolution your your mind does is is definitely tracking with this. And look, this game is on PS4 also, right? So I'm sure it, yes, it still is. looks yeah. great on that platform as well. I, I um, bet it does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I bet it looks totally fine there. But yeah, I guess like th that's that's maybe my way of saying like, what, so here's this guy. Uh, here's this oh, conversation Aaron. of like of. Oh, you sure I can't come with you? You sure you don't need anybody? Like, everyone is always trying to tag along with you. Everyone from the first game is like, yo, let me come along and we could get it on. Or, uh, or I mean, just fight or whatever. I don't know. And But she's always like, no, I, I look, it's I got the DNA of the person who made the terraforming program. I was made by a machine. Leave me alone. Um... And oh and God, so yeah, it, it's just it's it's a weirdly one note thing that you get out of these characters from the first game because Varl's the same. Like you literally slip out in the night to get away from Varl because he's just like following you around. Like no no, I'm gonna come with you. You're like cool. Let's leave in the morning. Peace. And then you fucking bail. Yeah, everyone's a clinger um, for sure. Yeah. yeah um, and and so it's just yeah, I don't know. Like your Aloy running around saving the world and also, I don't know, I guess some inadvertent thirst trap or something for all these fucking idiots. Um, just, just constantly letting people down. Just constantly yes. like having to soften the blow of like, nah, you you can't come with me. Yeah, it's um, like, I got shit I gotta do. Uh, so you stay here and you drink, I guess, and, and I gotta go. Um, There's, you know, uh, there is look like the, again i think the thing for me that's keeping me going right now is the is the fun action and, and discovering new machines and yeah. and seeing them do their thing and um what's not really working for me are these sort of new tribes that you come across and that you're just like oh okay i guess these people are upset about this thing and they all you know the sun's a big deal and, i'll go solve this problem for them and then we can move yeah. on yeah that's you know hopefully so. and it's yeah. you know and, and and honestly i i do think and again, this is just, you know, how I, how that game, you know, I'll, I'll look, I will be completely transparent seeing Horizon debut at E3 all those years ago and the way they came out with that game when she's taking down that like T-Rex looking, I mean, that was amazing. That there was, that was the first time in a very long time where I was like, this is an unbelievably creative new IP that I am super, super instantly intrigued and engaged with, right? And yep. I think I let some of that get away from me in finding out what the whole story was. I think I felt a little bit of a letdown. And again, that's just my personal kind of like, oh, sure. it's not what maybe I thought it was. But it's still interesting, but not maybe exactly what I thought it was. And, you know, and I think some of that hangover exists here where it, like we said, like a lot of these internal, you know, sect politics are just only so interesting. Also, whoever designed and the, the team of art directors with the costumes and stuff like give them give them a awards <laughs> give them the, the, like the intricate detail of all these costumes is so magnificent i can't even begin to explain um but but yeah you know in terms of like what is actually happening and what you are doing it, the, the the drive there and that momentum it, it's it's a bit of an uphill battle for me 
Yeah. So I think it sounds like you and I have put similar numbers of hours into the game, but it sounds like maybe you made a beeline into the Forbidden West, whereas I yeah. very much did every single side thing and, and filled up that tree. Like, once you get out there, it's... Uh, have you made any progress on the... The main story, they're like, hey, we gotta find Silence, we gotta, you know, we gotta find, we gotta this guy a backup, we've, we've gotta reboot Earth, you know, like, has, has there been any story beat that is tied back into that for you yet, or are you still yeah, just kind of out some here stuff, playing Diplomat? I've had some stuff where it's like, nah, keep going. I've had a lot of, like, dangling, you know, moving the goalposts a little bit. Um, so, which is, you know, obviously, you know, this this feels like a very massive game so that's to sort of be expected um i do think there's i've i've encountered a lot of like very satisfying action stuff that i think i was really looking for and that's why i'm kind of invested enough to to maybe see this thing go a little further um but uh but yeah like for me that that's kind of where where it's at i um you know, I, I'm, I am, I am expecting maybe another kind of twist that does change things, uh, and maybe spark some more interest in a way that, uh, is that goes beyond just the action sort of stuff. I, I've gotten, gotten a little bit of like a sense that maybe that's around the corner, but uh, it sort of remains to be seen. Um, I am. Yeah, I figure something's got to happen that. because I'm, I'm you know, the, again, sure. like yeah. this whole. This whole, this whole first chunk of the game, or first two chunks, because you kind of have the prologue, and then you get back to Meridian, and then you kind of are, are led out into this this first area, the town of Chain Scrape, and some of this other stuff around here, um, has all felt like you know kind of the the first area, uh, and then you're kind of led out into the the rest of the world to the west, and uh, yeah, it definitely. I'm glad, I don't know, I'm, I'm glad I got all those skill points because I am having much more fun with the combat and, and just all the other stuff with, you know, a after having invested in some of those skill trees, like just the action is just more enjoyable straight up. Um, so I'm glad I did that, but, you know, again, it's a lot of time spent with zero mention of what I'm actually doing or trying to do or trying to accomplish here. And very much this guy with this scroll being a pompous dick. Um, and, and at least she is very much right here. There's a good little, yeah. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. This Otho looking motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. No one has time for this fucking dipshit. So <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that Alo is very much like, yeah, no, like, yeah, you don't need to call me the savior, but also don't fucking waste my time. <laughs> but totally. also all I've been doing is just kind of wasting time and, and helping Helping individual citizens and and tribes and and little things like that. While meanwhile, the prologue of this game sure makes it sound like the end of the world's fucking imminent. <laughs> and you're like, well, all right, let's go hang out here for eight to ten hours and and uh, pick up upgrade points and save people out of a mine and and all this other shit. So um, yeah, I mean, that's all and, video and games, be, right? I mean, and it, and it'll be interesting to see if the proportion of time that's dedicated to this sort of background expositional drum rolling right where you're you, they do lay it on so thick out of the gate you know i had i was thinking like oh my god like either this entire game is just going to be that of like these yeah. these story beats constantly you know uh, uh filling up the entire the, the sort of gameplay session is how is that going to continue on and i feel like it's 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 taken its foot off the gas a little bit. Um, but again, like how is the, how is the story that evolves as you play going to match up with that really heavy front loaded exposition that they get out there uh, yeah. in the beginning? Um, you know, we'll sort of see how all that lands. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to playing more of it. Um, but it, you know, unsurprisingly it, it is just from a gameplay perspective of just like, I'm, having a good time navigating this world and and stalking these machines and upgrading my stuff and you know like like the the gameplay aspects of it the systems of it i think are still incredibly well designed it's also just you know it, it's incredibly similar to the first game so you know yeah that's a lot I mean, of people like that game so that's a good thing it's not like there's been eight of these things um right the, but, you know pulling back on that bow in slow motion and popping off a tank that shit's yeah. still real cool. Uh, There's so, an accessibility you know, option I'm thinking about turning on that I don't know. Uh, it feels like it will nullify all of that fun of the archery. 
because mm. it's like shooting the parts off to get the specific upgrade materials you need, right? Right. But there's an accessibility option that's just called easy loot. That means that if you, no matter how you kill an enemy, those parts might just be on the corpse. Okay. Instead of you definitely having to like blast them off and use tear I, damage I love, and all the other stuff, like like that's yeah. a powerful change <laughs> that I think it is. But I love that it's there. I love that yeah. that option's there. You know, I think that's yeah. that's smart. Yeah, that, that's it's smart. It feels borderline like a cheat code in some sense. Hey. But again, like I, I think all of the accessibility menu stuff, like all those options are awesome. Like they've been doing really good at, at just figuring out different ways to to balance that stuff. I think you can, you know, set how much damage you're doing separately from the difficulty and and just, you know, it's very customizable in a way that, you know, um, a lot of Sony stuff has been lately. Guardians of the Galaxy certainly had a ton of options there too. It's like Madden when Madden had sliders for every single thing. Oh right, for, yeah. Well, you know every every aspect of how good or bad a, the AI was at every little thing. It just feels like now all the, like all these games have different sliders that you customize that stuff. One might argue that you shouldn't have to do that level of customization, but honestly, I think it's awesome that that stuff is there. Yeah, the fact that it's there and that it's built into like the fabric of the game where the the dev is is like cool enough to be like, oh, we we are flexible and bendable enough to support that kind of yeah. shit. Like to me, that's brilliant. Like yeah. I definitely yeah. endorse that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that would ruin the game for a lot of people, but also like, yeah, like again, the whole point of the archery and whole point of the the ranged combat is to knock those parts off and and get your upgrade materials the hard way. So. It does. But, you know, again, if, you, if you're having trouble lining up those shots and aiming and all the other stuff, there's also stuff for making the concentration, the slow motion time last a lot longer and kick in automatically and all this other stuff. So, they, yeah, there's just a lot to dig through there before you even start. And you can change it on the fly, even if you want and 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 really tweak that game um, how you want it. And and that's pretty awesome. I, I think, you know, overall, I'm having a really good time with it, like I said, but it's the the story stuff is. I hope this game goes somewhere and, and I was hoping it was going to go somewhere real soon, but considering you're, you kind of maybe mainlined it a little bit more than I did and you're having the same thought and now I'm just like, oh man, should I stop doing all this side stuff and just try to get to the good parts and see if what's there, but, um, yeah. but I want all those skill points, so I don't know. There's value there. I think there is some fun stuff. There do there is a bit of like puzzly, you know, artifact finding stuff in some of those relics. Those some of those like ancient yeah. uh, buildings. Yep. I think that's fun, and they they kind of do some environmental puzzles there. And I I'm digging that. Um, so you know, I'm gonna try and like do as many of those that I can see. But the sort of side stuff that. You know, I'm, I've yet to hit a point where I'm just like dying a lot. And I feel like once I hit maybe that ceiling, I'll, I'll start to look around and, and, and upgrade where I can. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to try and beeline this thing as, as efficiently as possible. Yeah. Well, well, I've already got my level three bow and level three outfit and like, I've, I've been upgrading the shit out of everything along the way. And it's not a difficult game either way. <laughs> so, you know, the, but, you know, because I, I mean, as you just earn XP generally, you're going to gain levels and the, that right. that gives you more hit points as you level up. So, the, you know, that that is kind of separate from the, the upgrade trees and, and that sort of stuff, too. So, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's cool. And I, I guess I feel about the same way I felt about it with the first game where like there's it, it's it's really good. There's just something about it that isn't like sticking with me. Uh, that, the the first game felt that way. Like I played it, and I was like, "This is really great," and never thought about it again. Mm, yeah. Um, and and now getting back into the sequel and all other stuff, I'm like, "Yeah, I guess like I I'm still, yeah." It's just it just feels hard to engage with the world and and the story as it's being told right now. And I'm hoping that similar to the first game, hopefully it's just got a bunch of backloaded crazy shit, um, that lets you break free of like <laughs> that, you know that would all be, this diplomacy it shit would be, it would be wild if th they did that again we're like you make it to the end and it's just another backloaded like novel at the end and you're like oh my god uh, this is I'm, all true now too i won't say it because you know the, whatever the game's not even out but like there's something in the the information you get out of that prologue that made me think, what if that is a thing that you do at the end of this game? Um, yeah, I know what you're talking and, about. 
And I was like, oh, that would be fucking crazy. <laughs> So I might now now I've like set up some expectations there on top of that. Then I'm like, hopefully they pull the trigger on that because that would be some next level insanity. Um, but I don't know. I don't know yeah, if they're gonna we'll go see. there with it. We'll see. Yeah. That's Horizon Forbidden West. Um, and it's uh it's coming out, I guess, at the end of this week, but if you're watching this as it's going up, um we'll have some more to say about it on the podcast this week and then uh, you know, um the game's out i guess thursday morning and so maybe we'll do something more with it maybe not i don't know if we if we feel like we've gotten it all out by the end of the podcast maybe that's it but you know we might check it out a little bit more who can say either way maybe thanks for watching see ya see ya